I met my, my girl, Diane, at that time. And we started dating and fell in love and started planning on getting married. When this guy, Sable, found out about us, he was writing threatening letters. He was going to uh, cut her fingers off and mail them back to her mother. He wound up getting arrested again by the FBI and he got sentenced to 12 years. He had threatened to kill four FBI agents and a judge. When I get out, I'm going to kill you, 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 and you. He wound up getting out of federal prison on parole. And the threat started again. Within no time, he dropped off the face of the planet. And I found out that he got caught selling two kilos of cocaine to an undercover DEA agent down in Georgia. The guy took a plea. He's doing 20 years in federal prison down in Georgia. Two years later, I'm at a traffic light on Central Avenue in York is where I live. And I look out my peripheral vision and lo and behold, Richie Sable's there. He's got a cigar in his mouth. He does one of these to me and he takes off. I immediately notified the Yonkers police. I notified the NYPD. And then I guess it was about a week later or so, something in there, I get called in and my captain wants my gun and shield. Sergeant Morrison got in touch with the, the FBI and Richie Sable is still in prison in Georgia. He's locked away and they think that you've lost your mind. In the meantime, Richie Sable's out and unbeknownst to all of us, he's working for United States Customs. It doesn't take you to be a brain surgeon to figure out that either he ratted on somebody or he's ratting on you. And in any event, I felt it was all right for me to say that because I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. Turns out they felt I did something really wrong. They left two remaining charges of witness tampering with Richie Sable, who I had never spoken to or met with or threatened. I wound up doing 16 months being found guilty, doing 16 months in federal prison. 